everyone welcome back to the channel in today's lesson i hope to explain the key concepts needed to successfully write the discussion conclusion limitations and recommendations for your agricultural science sba the discussion section of the sba is an important aspect that i find most challenging for students so Let's spend some time working out the kinks. In this section of the SBA, students are required to discuss their findings based on the problem statement and aim pertaining to their research while using literature to support their findings. The term literature is considered as evidence or information formed from using credible sources such as a book, website, or journal which support the findings of the study. This requires the student to do a considerable amount of research to fulfill this requirement. In addition, given the nature of the SBA, addressing the economic importance in relation to your findings contribute to writing a well-rounded discussion. Keep in mind that the discussion carries three marks, which is a lot based on the rubric. With these in mind, I arrange the following pointers to help guide you through the process of writing the discussion. Let's take a look. One, a brief introduction to the topic. Two, from the results section, summarize the general observable trend. Or outcome. Three, use supporting literature to back up your findings. And four, highlight the economic impact or importance of your findings. Let's take a look at an example of a discussion. According to Passard 2003, broilers are birds reared for meat production. Broilers are fast growing birds which can reach production targets with respect to body weight once the right feeding schedule is utilized. This experiment was conducted to determine the most appropriate feeding schedule for the optimum growth and production of broiler birds. It included the use of different feeding schedules based on the percentage of cool protein whereby broiler starter has 21 and broiler grower has 18% crude protein. Protein is a crucial factor for weight gain in broiler birds and therefore knowing the appropriate amount of protein is critical. Dozier and Kid 2008 Based on the results of this experiment, birds that were fed broiler grower performed better than birds that were fed broiler starter in both parameters that were measured. The parameters measured were live weight on a weekly basis and dress weight at the end of six weeks. It is important to note that the results reflect a 0.3 difference in the live weight and dress weight at the end of six weeks. As such, these differences do not present a considerable difference between each treatment. According to Saleh, 1997, broiler birds should only be given broiler starter up to 14 days due to the fact that they didn't find any significant difference 
in the total weight gain when birds were fed broiler starter beyond the 14-day threshold. The result of this study is in harmony with the findings presented in our experiment. Furthermore, in a study done by Abessi in 2014, it was concluded that one could reduce dietary crude protein content up to 10% without any adverse effects on broiler performance. In addition, based on the feed composition of broiler starter and broiler grower, broiler grower has a higher fat content by 2.3%. The additional fat content might have contributed to a slightly higher life and dress weight at the end of the six week period. At the core of many business ventures, profit maximization is of paramount importance to the survival of the business. The cost of broiler grow is $36.50, while the cost of broiler starter is $37.50, reflecting a difference of $1. As such, feeding schedules that incorporate the use of broiler grow would realize a lower production cost and higher profits without reducing the overall dressed weight for chickens they produce. It is important to note that several studies were cited to support my findings. This is formally known as in-text citations. This particular aspect of the SBA will be addressed in another video. Once the discussion is finished, we can now move on to the conclusion. In this section, it is important to answer the aim or main objective of the study. The aim of this study is to determine the most appropriate feeding schedule for optimum growth and production of broiler birds. Let's take a look at the conclusion. Broilers that were fed broiler grow from week 2 to week 5 as part of their feeding schedule performed better than birds that were fed broiler starter from week 1 to week 5 by a difference of 0.3 pounds. Next, we have the limitations. In this part of the SBA, students should be able to highlight different ways the experiment can be improved to generate better, more conclusive results for future study. The reality is, no one study conducted is perfect in every way. A minimum of two limitations is required. Let's take a closer look at the limitations. This experiment was only conducted once. Therefore, the validity of the information presented can be strengthened by replicating the experiment. Two, a larger sample size can be used in the future experiments to potentially provide more conclusive results. Three, the experiment was limited to one breed or type of broiler bird, which reduces the ability to have a generalizable conclusion. And four, in this experiment, an analog scale was used, which might not be as accurate as using a digital scale for more precise readings. This brings us to the recommendations. In this section, Students are expected to formulate a recommendation based on their conclusion. Another can be derived from the list of limitations previously listed. This brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for viewing. In the next video, I will address the concepts involved in referencing work that you find useful to your study. See you guys next time.